As the world recovers and the economy rebounds back to an in-person world, an entire demographic of San Diego's population may be left behind. Refugees from other countries living in San Diego, many of them do not have the digital skills or the internet access that are essential to living here. The gap in knowledge leads to job loss and disparities across the board. Joining me now to talk more about the issue, investigative reporter Mary Plummer. Thanks for coming back on the show, Mary. Hey, Eric, good morning. Look, you know, uh, living in a new country, boy, that's, that's hard enough, but how much worse did the pandemic make it for these refugees? You know, Eric, the, the pandemic has really compounded problems for refugees in California, and it's it's quite a significant population. Uh, statewide, about 110,000 people have settled in California since 2002, and San Diego County is home uh, for many of them. There are about 30,000 refugees in the county. They come from many different countries, including uh, Somalia and Ethiopia. And recently, uh, refugees here in the county have been hard hit by COVID-19 and the changing economy. Uh, my colleague Roxana Popescu noted in her reporting that unemployment rates have been really, really problematic. Uh, last fall, unemployment among refugees was over three times higher, Eric, than the San Diego County average, uh, coming in at 22% of refugees who are, you know, without employment, without a job. Boy, you know, uh, before the pandemic, Mary, you would have come to the studio, we would have sat down and done an interview, but thanks to technology, we're able to just chat with you here and a lot of people have been zooming and we've relied on uh, distance learning for kids and technology. We've learned so much about it, but you've got to pay to have that technology and a lot of people can't afford that, right? So how does the lack of technology come into play for these refugees? It's it's certainly been a challenge. Um, many refugees are coming to the U.S. from rural areas, and in some cases from very different education backgrounds or training that just frankly doesn't really apply to the U.S. workforce as well as they'd like it to. Um, on top of that, there are language barriers. So you've got these problems kind of layered on top of other problems. And then when the pandemic hit, people who were already struggling to navigate, you know, work and family life suddenly found things just a lot harder. Uh, we spoke with a refugee from Syria and a case manager who's been helping her. Her name is Ala Taha. Uh, she dropped out of much needed doctor's appointments because she wasn't confident uh, navigating telehealth with her English skills. Uh, she says all of this has been really tough for her and really tough for her family. With no, my internet is not working in Wi-Fi. It's too, too hard. Yeah, for kids also too hard to sit down and talk for the laptop and um, watch Zoom and the attention to class. It's too hard for for them and for me also. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting to get her perspective on all of that. You know, I, I know, Mary, things are moving pretty fast here. Thousands of refugees may be left behind here. Um, we're all hoping that they're getting, you know, as much help as they as they can. What help is out there for them? Uh, there is some help, but we also found that some of the help is coming at a pretty steep cost. Uh, our story and our reporting found that one family uh, told us they paid about $700 to get third-party help uh, for applying for things like food stamps and college financial aid, uh, things that you don't need to pay to apply for. So there's really this risk out there uh, for folks being taken advantage of. Uh, local nonprofits are stepping in to try to provide assistance, but service providers we interviewed Interviewed said that for every refugee who gets help here in San Diego County, there are just hundreds who don't. The need is just really, really large. Uh, community organizations are hoping that local government leaders will provide more financial support. They say they just don't have the resources or budgets uh, to help all of the refugees who need need help and need resources right now. You know, our, our viewers have big hearts here, Mary, and you know, if some of them are, are watching this and they're very moved and they want to do something for the, these refugees in your reporting have you learned of any organizations or any ways that our viewers could help there are a lot of nonprofits working on these issues locally who could certainly use support uh, at our website inewsource.org you can head over there to learn the names of them uh, a lot of folks kind of needing help and a little leg up here as we kind of get back with the full economy moving yeah that's for sure all right inewsource.org mary thanks so much for your time always appreciate your reporting thank you